Hello and welcome to the Race Sports Car Championship, this time for some Division 1 action. This is the sprint race here at, at the Autopolis Racing Course, specifically the short course. And let's go through the grid here. So on pole position with a 14-1 was Bradas V and he just pipped out his Hungarian rival Matko. However, in qualifying, actually those two worked together, gave each other slipstream and they were separated just by 300th of a second. In third place is Ross 21, and in fourth place is Charlie Fraser in the Iron Brew car. Good qualifying for him. In fifth place is our championship winner after a fantastic round at Mount Panorama, Urpikito. We'll see what he can do from fifth place here. In sixth place is Scanny Flick. In seventh place is Sig Nico, and then making his return to the Race Sports Car Championship is Happy P79. Starting from eighth, we'll see what he can do after a couple of seasons away but it's always great to have Happy Hippie back. Fantastic racer, had some fantastic battles over the seasons here with the rest of the community. So this round is very, very crucial in the battle for second in the championship with Ross and Bradders fighting that out exclusively right now. As we get away here at Autopolis, they're starting the first gear, moving up in the second quickly. There's also been a very slight change in the ballast, it's increased slightly, so our championship leader, Urbiquito, has a little bit more ballast than usual, just a little bit more weight and 1% less power than he would normally have. And, oh, he's actually running a little bit wide there, coming out of turn one, so not a best start for Italian, although he is already on the back of Charlie Fraser. You can see there's a few pink cars here with Sigros, Nico, Urbiquito, and then Brothers V up front, all in the bright cars. Meanwhile, here's the uh, pink and blue versus just the blue. Oh, Charlie going defensive very early on. Good, good defensive. And Anthony Scanny's now looking to fight for fifth. As we go through that long left hander, Dirt, yeah, may play a. Oh, may play a part during the race. However, there's also a large amount of slipstream coming here to this final turn and also obviously coming down into turn one. A few different lines being taken there and Charlie using way more of the curb than a Pito but he does have a little bit more power so the Pito may struggle to overtake here going into turn one. And you can see Brothers V trying to avoid the slip dream. He makes that one move from the right hand side of the track for him towards the left towards the outside for turn one. Oh, Sigres Nico not getting a good run through that first corner. He drops a little bit further back. Meanwhile, he's going to the battle further up front. We can see that Mako is being hounded by Ross here for second. And as they go into the hairpin, Ross not making any moves yet. Maybe a little bit too far back. Ooh, Kikito just nudging his way on the inside, but not to be there as Charlie really does pull off a very good defence there. He is not being phased, even though he is against the two-time race sports car championship winner. Further back, Mako actually closing a little bit on our race leader, especially with a little bit of oversteer you can see from Bradersby. He doesn't go all the way to the outside of the track this time, so he's already towards the outside for turn one. So that was four tenths gained in that previous lap. And as we go into turn one, a little bit more curb used by Mako and actually might have closed in a little bit there. Quick glimpse further back, you can see the Happy Hippie still just on the back of Sigras and Nico. So it's good that these two drivers are able to battle it out here. Now, just a reminder, this is a sprint race. There is no tyre wear, no mandatory pit stop, and all drivers are have to use the racing soft compound tyres. Oh, that's very wide from our former race sports car championship winner. He drops down to a great stuff from Happy Happy to keep the pressure on and move up into seven. Oh, was that Abakito going a little bit wide? I know, I think it was Charlie actually running wide. There. Oh, you can't get much closer than that between our race leaders. 
Matko thought there was a gap. Bradders said otherwise straight away, and you can see he's already going to the outside of the track, trying to trick Matko by not taking the wide line out of that final turn. Further back, oh, and have you been, may have got a poor run out of that final turn because Sigras Nico is back through already. In the battle for four, fifth, and sixth, it is, it is at the, um, it is actually heating up here because Scanny is now on the back of this. And due to that big mistake, I think Scanny could move up into the top five here. We've already seen some fantastic performances from him this season, including the feature race at Red Bull Ring in the wet, as well as, of course, the pole position he took at Blue Moon Bay. And here he is overtaking our championship winner, uh, Pito. So he got caught out by his own mistake there at Turn 1. But he's held it around the outside there, great stuff. And this is why he is our championship winner here, even with two rounds to go. He just had such marvellous consistency. As we go back over up, Mako's on the inside of Bresby into the final turn, and he makes the move. No, he's gone too deep, he's gone too deep. Bradosvi saw it coming back on the inside, and now Rossi might move up into second place. You can see that Ali Ross is getting a little bit of friendly slipstream from the British driver ahead and the Hungarian being left out to dry there in the vodka car. But Matko holding on for now, but that is a little bit of breathing room there for the race leader. Ross being very, very consistent so far. He's going to go for a move into turn two. Officially, this is turn three, but I'm not having that. This is turn two in my book, and this is turn three and turn four. The double apex turn, there are a few different lines to take, although the top three, pretty similar. Just some of the many fantastic liveries here in the Race Balls Cut Championship. And they can show off more of their fantastic liveries at the final round at the Suzuka circuit. Back up front, it is the pink going against the grey. Now that's a fantastic run out from Matko, and I think this could be an opportunity into turn one. Maybe a little bit tight from the race leader, as Matko puts in a 14.6, which is a tenth quicker than Bradersley at this stage, which is actually his personal best, which just shows that maybe Bradersley is struggling to pull away. Going into turn one, he has to defend, but that's a pretty easy defence for him so far but there's still 10 laps to go. Further back and Charlie Fraser's run wide, it's free wide going into turn two. Kito moves up into fourth, finally. Charlie Fraser will want to maybe re-overtake here into turn five, no. And Scanny dropped out, let's just see what happened there at turn one. So Scanny was actually battling with Paquito and Charlie Fraser just ran a little bit too wide. Struggled with the acceleration of Paquito there. Oh, a little bit on the grass, but a fantastic move nonetheless. As we go back towards the lead battle, we can see it's probably as close as it has ever been with Bradley really struggling to contain the lead here. Oh, he goes a little bit defensive way before the zone. He's break too late, and Matko smells a chance, but he oversteers far too much coming out of that final turn. And you can see there, Brensby going ultra towards the uh, outside of the track before turn one, trying to get rid of that slipstream as early as he can, try and trick him. Ross being left out, no slipstream for him here. And you can see them using as much of the track as they can for turn one. You do have to be careful though, as clipping the grass is easier than you may think. Back in the battle for seventh and sixth is picking up the pace a little bit now. But it is happy to be half a second faster on that previous tour around the Otapoli short course. And that's a little bit wide again from the Italian. <coughs> And the number 79 is doing wonders to have a chance here into turn five. No, it's not going to work there. Sig will get the better acceleration. 
as we go back up to the battle for the lead and Brandsby are maybe not using too much of the track there. We're almost approaching the halfway mark now and Brandsby has been leading for all but about half a second when Matt Kerr went for a good dive but it was just a little bit too far. Further back, Bikita running way, way wide of that final corner. Daddy Kaz is not going to be happy with that. And Charlie Fraser is surely going to get a great slipstream here. I don't think he's close enough though, although it is a personal best lap from the Scottish driver. No, it's too far back. You can see the top three battling ahead. There's only a couple of seconds though to this group, so if Bikito can uh, put in some good laps. Oh, Charlie's lost it, Charlie's lost it. And we can see that Scanny is going to close in. Well, I was just saying that if Erpiquito can just hold off Charlie, get away, not battle too much, he can close in on that top three. Scanny's going for the move. No, it's defended well by Charlie Fraser. So back up front, and yeah, if these three continue the battle, then Paquito is waiting in the wings. And if he can continue to put in these mid 14s and high 14s, he'll be fighting for that podium. Oh, I thought for a moment Matko was going for the move, but no, and it's going to be Bradley who gets the better acceleration there with a slightly later apex. Further back, Sig a little bit deep, but Happy Happy a little bit too far to the inside, so they will stay 7th and 8th for now. And in the battle for 5th, it is Scanny who is getting the better run towards turn 1 there in the orange and teal but not quite enough. He needs that straight to be a little bit longer or he needs to put pressure on throughout the entire 75 second course. Back up front, I do hear tyre squealing and it is because Ross is now putting the pressure on Matko. Matko in a very difficult position now because he wants to be the aggressor. He wants to take the lead and take the initiative here in the sprint race and grab those 20 points. But so does Ross, and that goes home to attack and defend. Further back, Sig finally finding his way here. Put in those 14s finally, as Happy Happy just loses a little bit of consistency, drops back down into the 15s. As we go back into the battle for the lead, Brad has been now done his personal best of the lap race with a 14.5 with absolutely no slipstream. Which actually very similar that time to Matko's personal best. Meanwhile, the fastest lap of the race goes to Ross with a 14.4. Now, oh, that's very wide from Bradders V. This will be the chance that Matko's wanted for the past 11 minutes here. Bradders V going ultra defensive just at that little kink. Holds on for now though. But yeah, just even the smallest mistake, even just missing an apex, that's two temps lost and that is a position lost when the racing is this close as Matko goes to the inside. That may stop him getting a good run out of the corner as Ross gets a much wider line. Oh, you can see the dirty air there affecting Ross as he has to lift off near the exit of the corner. Will Matko try a cheeky dive bomb? Mm, well, Bradesby goes defensive already and will hold it off, but maybe Ross or Matko can get the better exit. Oh, that's perfect parking the bus there from the race leader. But Matko, as much as he may not have got by then, he may get by now. This is the best chance he's had for about six laps now. To the outside, he has the higher speed. He's taking the lead, but Bradley holding on on the inside. Can Matko go around the outside? I think he can. Amazing work there from Matko. The Hungarian takes lead around the outside. What an overtake here in the Race Sports Car Championship. Let's just go. Oh, big incident, and Matko still stays on track. Bradley in second, Ross in third. Okay, let's just catch a replay of that term on overtake. Just on board here, you can see, holding it around the outside, there was room given there on the outside by Bradders V, but superb trust and superb racecraft between the two, especially from Matko to take the lead. And then here, as you go into turn two, oh, it was a little tough. 
but Bredders holds off to stay in second place. Ross stays in third. Bredders V to the inside. No, but that's also a little... I don't know if there was contact though, but the door was slightly open it seemed as we go through the long left turn. Matko having to take a more deep line. Ross towards the inside. No, on the grass he was, but stays in third. You can see that with all this, Paquita is now about half a second closer than he was. And to the inside, Bradley goes to the outside, to the inside. He's all over the place. He goes to the inside eventually. I think they've made it through without contact, though. And they've still made it through without contact. Side by side they go, but Mako will get the better run out of the corner. He also has 1% more power than Bradersby, who is third in the championship. And unless Bradersby can dive down the inside to turn one, when he tries to break later, I don't think it's late enough. Oh, it's almost a carbon copy of last time. And you know what? Mako holds on, and now it's Ross who might get into second place in all of this. Bradersby may be a little bit too aggressive, going for an overtake where it was not possible. But Ross doesn't have the space and they can go around the outside at turn two, on the inside for turn three. Well, plenty of room was given, Ross maybe being a little bit too nice there. The second was on the plate. This is a fantastic Division 1 racing here in Season 8. And this is why these drivers love racing these cars so much. Just a quick look further back as Sigurds and Nico runs wide. Happy Hippie going to be hounding him through the left turn. But we've got to go back to our race lead. Bradsby diving to the inside? No, he doesn't. He stays safe. Focuses more on the exit and will focus on the slipstream he can get out of that final turn. They're both on the grass. I think all three of them are on, on the grass in the end. And now that Matko is leading, his pace is kind of struggling. We do see that quite a bit, that when the slipstream helps the car in second as to a position swap. Oh no, not again. I think that, I don't think it's going to be uh, an overtake for Bradersby unless it is. I think he's done it. Mako gave a little bit too much room. Ross might move into second. This time he's on the inside rather than the outside and Mako loses two positions there in 10 seconds. It was a good dive from Bradersby. Ross taking some Great initiative and good strategy work to move in the second there, following Bradersby through as if Matko was almost a back marker there. And look who is closing in there after a second lost on that previous lap. It is Paquito in fourth. He's been setting those consistent lap times. And now it's a four car battle for the win. In fifth place is Charlie Fraser, who is having that time to pull away from Scanny Flick. And then seventh is Sigur and Nico, just ahead of Happy Hippie. But back up front. It is Bradersby back in the lead there after Marco lost it at turn one. Bradersby tried the same move he did on the previous lap, and this time it worked out for some reason. And now, if, it, if I had to guess, I'd say Ross is the favourite for this sprint race. He's been very cool, very collected. And he will find that perfect moment to take the lead from Bradersby, as they're very close to the white line, actually on the white line, but you don't want to be further than that onto the grass. go on board with Ross, he takes a tighter line into turn two and you can see he only holds Bredersby there, he isn't losing too much speed even with dirty air. But no, that's all, oh, Mako on the inside is that. You can see Mako diving down the inside and that's going to really cost Ross, he had to give him another half the car width. And Bredersby pulling away, Irvi Kito now in on the action in fourth. Further back, we had a fight for 7th place as Sigra's Nico was caught up by Happy Hippie, who sat at 14.8, his personal best, and Sig goes way too deep at Turn 1, losing that position, and he's now at the back of the field. Charlie Fraser currently on his own, but his pace has been exceptional these last few laps. 14.5 hours on his own, nothing to be sniffed at, and is matching the leader's race pace. That is, when they aren't battling, and currently they are, with just two laps to go here. As they go downhill for that final turn, it's a very tricky turn, but has provided some excellent racing for us already. With drivers trying to get different runs out of the corner onto the longest straight of the track.
after season 8 finishes we will have some special events for you anyone free to enter currently Mako is entering in second place no maybe a little bit too nice Ross gives the room and Bradley is opening a gap ahead Urbikito on the inside Urbikito takes third but Mako is surely going to go down the inside he hits Ross very slightly or maybe not maybe I'm mistaken but Mikito runs wide Mako will stay in third and all of that Ross stays in second Kita's mistake there maybe cost him the podium, but that has given Bradders V the second safety gap he needed. It's not over yet though, as Ross, Matko, and Pikita will all get a good slip from. Further back, we've got the back two running very wide at the long lap turn. Sig pushing hard to try and get in the seventh place. Oh, a little bit of drift out action from Happy Hippie. He'll stay in seventh for Sig runs a little bit deep. Back up front, it is now the white flag. Here in Japan, you can see Matko very, very close with uh, Pagito. These two are fierce rivals, and Pagito definitely wants another podium to add to his collection. Ross to the inside? No, he's a little bit too far back. That battling with Matko may have cost Ross the opportunity he wanted right near the end of the race. He wanted to stay calm, he wanted to stay cool and just pick off an opportunity when it was perfect in the right moment. That's how he got to Matko in the first place. But I think it's too late. It has been a really good final lap here to close by an extra half a second. But as we go through that final turn, it's going to be Brunsby unless he makes a crucial mistake. Meanwhile, Ross is out on the fastest lap of the race so far. He pushes him hard, Bradersby trying to avoid the slipstream as early as he can, he will cross the line here on top list for the sprint race win, fantastic stuff, Ross getting the fastest lap of the race there at the end of a 14-1 just to show how hard he was pushing there at the end, Bradersby does his personal best at the end, he was pushing, Matko does his personal best at the end, let's just catch a replay of some of this action near the end, so Herb Keto is on board there, he did have the fastest lap but Ross took it away, Matko was comfortably in third, Further back, Charlie and all of that had actually closed with. But he had the fastest lap not too long ago in fifth place. In sixth place, crossing the line with a scanny flick. Good performance nonetheless. And then in seventh place, rejoining us, Happy Happy, and eighth is Sig Resonico. We hope you've enjoyed this race. We will see you next time.